Science and archaeology are constantly advancing, often side by side. Discovering the future and uncovering the past often go together perfectly. The better the technology for space exploits and future human development, the better the technology for unearthing ancient secrets in hopes of finding out our origins in full. The more we, as a species, look towards conquering the stars and faraway galaxies, the more we should look back at our history to see how far we've come. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three archaeological and scientific advancements. Where did lunar water come from? Our moon has a rather bizarre phenomenon we are still trying to puzzle our way through. There is lunar water on the moon, despite us not being able to observe a water cycle similar to ours on Earth. A recent study has reported clear evidence that there are water molecules on the surface of or held within the grains of the lunar soil. If we can research what kinds of water are available here and precisely where that water is, then we may be able to fathom out the seemingly magical water cycle of the moon. Another study with groundbreaking revelations found small areas of the moon that are within a permanent shadow. This creates a cold enough environment for ice to form. Additionally, the space of these areas covers 15,400 square miles according to National Geographic. Current guesses indicate that the water cycle on the moon is carried through hydrogen in solar wind reacting with oxygen on the surface. This is a stark contrast to our rain, rivers, seawater cycle here on Earth. Other suggestions have guessed that the lunar water travels, migrating to remain in a shadowed zone as opposed to one with sun. Exactly how this happens still requires plenty of further research. Jessica Sunshine, University of Maryland planetary scientist, says that these new findings suggest a more complex process than what we thought before. The practical application once we figure this out would be remarkable. This research has useful implications as to how humans may be able to travel, not only to the moon, but further beyond too. The next NASA mission, Artemis, aims to place the first woman and next man on the moon. If we can understand the moon's water cycle before then, then we may be able to convert the water into a resource for energy. One trial for the lunar water to withstand is the harsh climate of the moon, with a high of 120 degrees Celsius and a more than chilly low of minus 133 degrees Celsius. It wouldn't be improbable for the water to evaporate, especially without a thick atmosphere. But, luckily for us, even in the sun there are still traces of water, though these are faint. Based upon current observations, there appears to be 12 ounces of lunar water to one cubic meter, meaning the water, whilst existent, is very sparse. This is 100 times drier than the Sahara Desert. Whilst there is water present on the moon, we need to conduct more observations, more analysis, more research before we take action with this thrilling discovery. Once we know a little more about the intricate process, we may need to implement some man-made intervention for this water to be of use, due to its limited supply. This research is being referred to by some as the slow revolution. Whilst new progress is being made and we are slowly beginning to make a clearer picture, but the tedious process could still take decades of more research. Researchers completing this project report that despite having a difficult job, the work is very rewarding, and know that the findings will be worthwhile. Whilst there are so many unanswered questions out in the universe, some of the more interesting ones begin much closer to home. Between unanswered questions and thrilling new research, our moon has a lot of exciting news going on at the moment. New Ancient Human Species Bones Uncovered in the Philippines In the Philippines in 2019, human fossils were revealed within a cave on Luzon, a large island in the Philippines. Perhaps the most intriguing aspect of these human fossils is the possibility that these early humans may have adapted to climb trees, illustrated through the curves found within finger and toe bones. This species has been considered to be distinct from Homo sapiens, acquiring the name Homo luzonensis, 
we are currently acting under the assumption that this ancient species lived 50,000 to 80,000 years ago, alongside the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. Dartmouth College, homo footbone expert Jeremy De Silva explains that this discovery mirrors the discovery of Homo floresiensis, nicknamed a hobbit, found within Indonesia. He stated, one is interesting, two is a pattern. His response suggests that we may be drawing close to potential breakthroughs in the field. A team way back in 2007 found a metatarsal. The discovery of this foot bone, also in Luzon, alongside the more recent findings, are indicative of a species that is definitely a member of the same genus as modern-day humans. The team also stumbled across two teeth, two finger bones, two toe bones and a femur. Although this cannot be guaranteed, current beliefs are that these belong to three separate people. Some experts remain skeptical, suggesting that more evidence is needed before we begin drawing concrete conclusions. Many are concerned as to the condition of DNA after all this time, as humid conditions can cause the deterioration of DNA rather rapidly, leading to a lack of validity in data. Whether this is a new ancient species related to modern humans or an expansion of a separate species within our genus, these bones are promising to the future of paleontological and archaeological research. Our history as humans is a jigsaw that we are still finding the pieces for, but with each new discovery we get a little closer to finding out just where we came from. Why has no one seen a whale shark giving birth? The whale shark has a reputation of being the gentle giants of the ocean, and for good reason. Dwarfing their infamous great white relatives, they can grow to as large as a school bus but are peaceful filter feeders with huge flattened heads and a unique spotted pattern on their backs. The giant whale shark holds the record for one of the biggest animals in the sea, but they are also one of the biggest mysteries. As researchers tried to work out how to save this endangered species, they realized that they had no idea about one of the most crucial aspects of this endeavor. How exactly do whale sharks give birth? To be able to help a species survive, scientists need to understand the mating patterns and birthing behavior of that species. However, researchers studying whale sharks have never been able to witness these behaviors in the sharks that they study. In 2018, Scientists were able to perform ultrasound on several female whale sharks off the coast of the Galapagos Islands who appeared to have distended stomachs. However, although they were able to obtain imaging of unfertilized eggs and ovaries, the females were not pregnant. A second attempt to uncover the mystery involved placing trackers on several female whale sharks, but scientists were yet again left with more unanswered questions as the sharks frequently dove below the 2,000 meter range of the satellites and nobody knows exactly why, as the plankton that the sharks feed on are not found at such depths. Finding it nearly impossible to form a conservation plan based on such meager knowledge, marine biologists have been forced to watch as the number of whale sharks dwindles each day. They are widely traveled and can be found in a variety of waters across the world, making it nearly impossible to track their movements. One tagged shark, named Anne, traveled nearly 13,000 miles over the course of two years and even ended up in the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest place on Earth. Fortunately, there have been some lucky breaks to give scientists some clues as to how exactly the whale shark reproduces. Two individual eyewitness reports of a whale shark mating ritual in the South Atlantic have hinted at the necessary conditions for mating to occur. A harpooned female whale shark in 1995 turned out to be pregnant with over 300 pups in different stages of development, but all from the same father, indicating that the female sharks likely mate once and store the sperm for later release. Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta is home to four juvenile whale sharks who have yet to reach sexual maturity, but the hope is that scientists will be able to study their behavior in captivity to help understand more of what happens in the wild. What is certain, however, is that researchers are in a vital race against time to try to solve these mysteries and save this majestic species.
Although sharks fascinate many people because of their vicious reputations, the truth is that there are many aspects of these majestic creatures that remain a mystery and they are not as bloodthirsty as many believe them to be. Hopefully, increasing research will help to promote awareness of the true nature of the species so that they can be better protected from extinction as they roam the ocean ecosystems.